Now, part of the Western response to the Japanese onslaught on the international car market has been to follow the principle, if you can't beat them, join them. So, for example, we have General Motors buying into Isuzu and Ford of America buying fully 25% of Mazda. So when Mazda redesigned their major medium-sized contender, the 323, it wasn't entirely inappropriate they should choose America to reveal it to the press. Thus it was that two weeks ago I had the opportunity to drive the new car. The European car makers are under increasing pressure from the Japanese in their continued pursuit of excellence. The mid-sized Mazda 323 is no exception. A new range with an old name or number. It's made up of a three-door hatchback, a four-door saloon, and this five-door coupe. Or is it a hatchback or even a fastback? Of course, one man's fastback is another man's coupe, but certainly the tide seems to have turned against the stream of boringly uh, similar hatchbacks we've had over the past few years towards this uh, somewhat neglected form. As for the looks of this particular car, well, they grow on you with increasing familiarity. It looks good from most angles, from the uh, low front end, complete with sporty pop-up headlamps, to the nicely handled, emphatically rounded rear end. It moves well with its 16-valve engine, nothing uh, sort of heart searching or stomach churning, but a crisp 0 to 6 in 8.2 seconds, top speed 125 miles an hour, although well, where it's going to do that kind of speed with the family on board, I can't imagine. It's also uh, remarkably quiet, even at speed on these bumpy mountain roads, because they've managed to knock out a lot of the uh, wheel rumble you get with smaller cars. Indeed, the changes under the skin are as important as the new shapes themselves. For example, they've managed to achieve a 40% improvement in torsional stiffness, and therefore better road holding and handling, by beefing up the door sill sections and the front and rear cross members. The uh, fit and finish, or the build quality, they say, is a very high standard indeed. So too is this paint finish. They claim to have designed a, a new way of putting on the paint that gives them this near Mercedes-like uh, paint job. Five doors rather than three, important that I think in a family car. I wonder how long before Vauxhall, for example, brings out a five door Calibra. The back end, shades of the Sierra XR 4x4 and the Celica. That's perhaps because the wind tunnel, of course, doesn't know a master from a Mars bar. As for the boot itself, well, I think somewhat disappointing. Couldn't get more than a couple of suitcases in there. Inside, the overall effect is sporting but uh, spartan with the chunky gear lever and the instruments in a binnacle behind the steering wheel. Very functional, plenty of legroom in the front, adequate in the back, provided you haven't got ostrich legs, and a very high specification from the tinted glass and the electric sunroof to the central door locking. And that really is the strength of the other two cars in the range. This is the middle of the range, the classic four-door family saloon. Totally unexciting in terms of design, but once again, a very carefully put together, very competitive package of performance in terms of the 16-valve engine, interior space, and its very high specification. Finally, the bottom of the range, the 1.3-litre three-door hatchback, comes in a 1.8-litre form as well, with a performance very similar to that of the GT, uh, very similar in appearance to the uh, Peugeot 205, but larger, of course, more space, more legroom, more headroom than either the Golf, or the Civic, and once again, very highly specified. They believe this will be the best seller of the lot. As to drivability, will all the models benefit from the stiffening up of the chassis and the redesign of the suspension? The uh, power-assisted rack and pinion steering is nicely precise. What would I car up against? Well, the uh, so-called sports seats on this model are nothing special. The interiors, although they use the space very well, uh, are rather unexciting. And the acceleration on this GT version, when you put your foot hard down in fourth, say, is uh, somewhat underwhelming. But that having been said, it feels tight and steady. It doesn't skip around, even on these bumpy mountain roads. It doesn't uh, wander from the line. And I would say that the undoubtedly first-class engineering of these cars and their very high specification will put Mazda very well back in the front row.